And it's that time of year when our tomatoes come under attack in the garden. The Cornell Cooperative Extension's Amy Ivey is back with us this week. It's the height of the gardening season, so a lot of people's attention goes to the tomatoes. How are the tomatoes doing? It's everybody's favorite crop. You ask any, you ask all the gardeners in the country what their favorite vegetable to grow is, and they'll say tomatoes. And it's been a good year, finally. It's gotten good for tomatoes. What are the concerns, though? Every year we hear about the problems like late blight and some of the other diseases. Right, yes, and so late blight is looming. It is getting closer, so it is good to you know be aware of that. That's the one that does not overwinter here, so that's why it's always an issue is it going to come this year? It comes up on storm fronts more typically. Mm -hmm. um, it, in 2009, when we had such a terrible problem and everybody was affected, it, it was actually spread through the big box stores, the supplier, the national supplier of so many of the transplants. You know, it just got spread far and wide. But now we're watching it more in case of, in terms of the weather fronts coming in. So it's not here yet, not here, but any day that could change. It is over in the Burlington area. So it's very close to us now. So gardeners should be vigilant. So I thought we'd talk about what to look for. Um, there are two common diseases that we see all the time on tomatoes. It's really not a, a too big of a deal. Um, early blight makes the splotch and what's characteristic is it has a yellow halo around it mm -hmm. and if you look up close you can see concentric circles inside the spot. It has a defined edge. And then septoria leaf spot, we're seeing more and more and this is actually getting to be quite a problem in our area and it has distinct round spots and if you look up close the center of the spot will have a tan center okay. and then a very but a clear again defined spot compared to nothing else really looks like late blight. Late blight it almost reminds me of a watercolor. You know how when you put watercolor paint on a paper it kind of bleeds? That it, it spreads so fast that it doesn't really have a defined edge. It kind of has a soft edge and in the course of a day the spot will go from a quarter size to a half dollar to even bigger. Mm. So it, it moves so rapidly. It, so once you see it in your planting for home gardeners you're pretty much that the crop is done for. So, um, but we do want to know where it's showing up, so please call the Cooperative Extension Office if you have any suspicion about it. We identify it for free. You can bring, it would be great if you would put your um, some suspect leaves into a baggie and bring it to the office. Uh, just drop it off. Be on the alert for late blight. Um, but the other two are usually not a serious problem. Often the plant, you know, um, either will have very little, it, those two start at the bottom and work mm -hmm. up slowly, and usually the plant can grow ahead of those problems and you'll still get a decent crop. Sometimes the plants can look pretty bad and still produce a good crop. Sometimes they look great and you hardly know they have a problem at all. So don't panic if you see the early blight or the septoria leaf spot. Um, it's the late blight that, we, that, that we're really concerned about. about. There's also a really great website called USA Blight blight, all one word, dot org. And it's got pictures of what it looks like. It's got a map that shows where the confirmed sightings are in the whole country. So it's fun to go and look and see what's going on and kind of get some more information about it. Thanks a lot, Amy. You're welcome.